Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. All right, that was a joke. Uh, if you understand the joke, you are way too young to watch that documentary. Go read a book or something. All right, welcome to week three, lesson three. We are just on page 291 today, but we are on a new topic. But luckily, it fits into our last topic. So I kind of smushed them together. Ready? Let's go. All right, as always, let's start off with a quiz. Using less resources is called A, ecology, B, biodiversity, C, conservation, or D, ecological services. Take five, four, three, two, one. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to eliminate ecology because ecology is the study of ecosystems, and I don't really see anything about studying in our question. I'm also going to take out ecological services because those are benefits or good things that we get from our ecosystem like food. So it's between biodiversity and conservation. Correct answer is C, conservation. That means to use less resources to conserve your resources. Biodiversity is the variety and differences of organisms. Question for you guys today is what do you need to live? And I mean, what do you absolutely need to survive that is essential? So my first answer would be food because I love to eat. Um, maybe some of you guys said shelter. You need a place to protect you from the wind and the weather and the sun. And maybe you guys got a little technical and said your cell phone. That's fair. And um, if you're going to have a cell phone, you're going to need some way to charge it. So you're probably going to need some sort of electricity in your shelter. Okay, so fine. We got four things that we need to live. I'm going to really look about, or excuse me, really look where these things came from. So let me start with food. Where does food come from? Well, really it comes from our environment. Um, it comes from farms. It comes from plants. Plants can't grow without the wind, water, sun. All right. What about our house? Well, our house is mainly going to be made of wood. So again, wood comes from nature, from trees. Okay, well, what about our cell phone? That's like definitely man-made, correct? Well, there are some really essential parts of the cell phone that actually come from nature. Like, for example, this is a picture of silicone, which is a really important element that's in our phone. Without silicone, our phones wouldn't work. And even look at electricity. Well, electricity uh, has wires, and those wires are usually made out of copper. And copper is another element that we can actually pull from Earth. So if we look at all of our bare essentials, they all really come from the ecosystem. So all of our resources are coming from our ecosystem. So the goal of today is to learn about natural resources. So what does that mean? Natural resources are anything occurring in nature that humans use. So that's like our food, our copper for our electricity, uh, our trees for our houses, anything that humans use that isn't man-made. Okay, and perhaps you already know this because I feel like you've been learning about natural resources for a long time now, but there are two types. We've got renewable resources. I want you to think of the word renew like use again. These are resources that can be renewed or replenished. Replenish is like another word for reloaded. So what are some examples of these? Well, we've got wind, like wind will never go away. Wind will never die. It'll always be on Earth. Have you guys ever gone to the beach and you see the wind turbines? Or maybe you've looked at the um, horizon and see the wind turbines on the beach from Buffalo? We've got sun. Sun's not going away anytime soon. And another example are trees. Um, <clears throat> trees, we just have to be really careful that we manage them well. But if we do a good job, you have a tree. A tree will produ produce seeds. It'll make more trees. So the second type, of natural resources are non-renewable resources, and they're going to be the opposite of renewable resources. So they cannot be used again or replaced. And we can actually run out of them. Like once they're gone, they are gone. Let me give you an example. If you guys have a gas stove, so instead of having that little heated circle, you actually see little flames pop out. 
um, that gas is going to run out. Uh, we only have a limited amount of it. And actually, helium is a non-renewable resource, and I didn't learn that till this year. I don't know if you guys remember a couple months ago, there's been a lot of helium shortages. So I usually go to the Dollar Tree to get birthday balloons. And, you know, for the past like six months when I've gone there, they've been out of helium because we're experiencing a shortage of that. And once we're out, we are out of that. Let's end with a quiz as per usual. So coal is used for fuel. It was made millions of years ago from dead plants that have been buried underground. It is taken out of the ground in order to be used. Coal is a, letter A, renewable resource, resource or letter B, non-renewable resource. What do you think? Do you think that we can make more coal or do you think that once we use it, we are done? Well, once we use it, we are done. Once we take all of it out of the ground, we don't have any more. So it is considered a non-renewable resource. All right, guys, that is it for today. Uh, I will see you on the interwebs later. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.